Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to Empire's SMP, where... <sighs> I'm gonna have to take these off and stash them for the duration of the reign of our new Emperor, Scott Smajor. Because, yes, Scott has taken the crown from Jimmy. The Cod Empire has fallen, or at least <laughs> its its dominion over the entirety of Empire's SMP has fallen. My ally, the Cod Father, struck down in his prime, and we have a new emperor in the form of Scott Smajor. So Scott has decreed that nobody is allowed to use an elytra without his express permission, which, as somebody who is going to be building a mountain... <laughs> It is is a bit of a harsh decree, but I think I may have some good ways around that. And for now, at least, I'm going to take advantage of being able to wear full netherite armor for the first time in a while. So if I am going to take a lot of full damage from my new methods, then at least I'll be protected from a little bit more of it. And oh, good. Yeah, now I'm stuck in my own honey blocks. As I was saying, there we go. We can put that away. And I have the plan of maybe using Riptide a little bit more judiciously in order to get myself up onto the ant hill. So I'll need to spend a little bit of time figuring out what the best approach is with buckets of water and maybe doing this. Yeah, I reckon that'll work. That'll work for a little while. Might take a little bit more fall damage than I am used to, but yeah, as long as I'm not washing away all of my torches or foliage or anything like that in the process, I can see that being a reasonable way of getting around. In fact, it might have some influence over the design of the ant hill itself. Maybe if we put little pools of water around here, maybe as water features or something like that, part of the structures around the outside, then that can feel a little bit deliberate and it can still feel like something that I can use to get around in the meantime because yeah I gotta tell you not having elytra <laughs> I'm so used to just kind of casually gliding between jumps to make parkouring around the place a little bit more easy so I think I'll have to adjust my tactics a little bit here but who knows we should be able to continue at least the construction process oh dear yeah, I can see this being a problem. <laughs> I can see this being a real problem. Scott, what have you done? <laughs> oh dear. All right, well, I'll probably spend a little bit more time working on the particulars of that so that accidents like that can be avoided, and I may have to petition our new emperor for one of those flight passes considering the scale of this build project. But in the meantime, we can maybe have a little bit of fun with it. And speaking of the little bit of fun we are having, I'm going to riptide my way over to the jungle because I want to show you guys a project that we all got up to over the weekend. Welcome to the Empire of Mangrovia, the newest addition to Empire's SMP. This area was all put together on the Love Tropics charity stream this last weekend. The event was raising money for OSA, which is a mangrove conservation charity working in Costa Rica, and we were actually able to welcome Corey Cheviak from the Mojang team onto the server to help us with the donations as they came in, because we wanted to have a bunch of trees and bridges and houses and stuff in this area dedicated to you guys in a kind of empire of the viewers and so people who were able to donate were named and put on trees and there's a board full of signs over here from people that were able to donate it was a fantastic event and super cool that this remains a part of the empire's server permanently and i presume at some point there is going to be a world download for this world i'm totally fine with that happening but of course the texture pack that we're using will not necessarily be distributed with it because it's the work of a variety of different artists and we haven't necessarily got permission from everybody to distribute their art just to use it for our own purposes but if we make a world download available which i'm hoping we will you'll be able to come here and see the trees that we put together and can Consider this the empire of the viewers. There's even a, uh, a celebrity axolotl up there in a tank <laughs> behind the R of the Mangrovia sign that Catherine built, but I'm really happy with this place. It looks absolutely awesome from the air, which I would love to show you, but unfortunately Scott's Major has taken all of our wings away. <laughs> so I won't be able to show you a view of it from Elytra, although maybe I'll come in with my camera account or the replay mod and take a couple of screenshots to put in the video so you guys can appreciate how chaotic and cool 
cool this area looks. We obviously had a bunch of fun playing with Corey. It got a little bit heated occasionally. There may have been a couple of jokes made at the expense of Gemini Tay's hat, and then heads started flying. But of course, we all had fantastic fun raising money for a good cause. So once again, thank you to the Love Tropics team for having us, and we hope that you guys enjoyed the stream. And now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to riptide my way home and try and sort out the vigil. <laughs> Oh, and now it's been shown in both their videos, which hopefully you folks have watched. I can finally show you what I was blurring out of the previous video where we ended up doing the statue for Jimmy's embassy. And it's this, <laughs> the statue of Joel, which I just wanted to laugh at on camera for a second because that face is going to haunt my dreams. He is here like the Colossus of Mazalia, taking up two of the slime pads, holding a salmon in one hand and moss in the other. I didn't want to not do a video about my own statue. Does Jimmy have zombies in here? Is there, are, there, are there zombies in Jimmy's base? Anyway, um, <laughs> I didn't want to not do my episode over here where I built my own statue, but it's kind of hard to compete with what Joel has done. But <laughs> well done. Anyway, looks fantastic. And uh, I think Jimmy is probably going to build another couple of slime pads for his remaining embassies, which I think are for Mythical Sausage and Lizzie. <laughs> but good luck with that, because I don't think anyone's really going to be able to measure up to the King of Mazalia at this point. Ah, <sighs> there we go. I am back. Back in Pixandria after so long and finally we're going to update the vigil. It's it's getting dark. It has taken me a full day to get to the jungle and a full day to get back again. That would be a matter of seconds if I could use my elytra. I don't know if it's going to be me but somebody is going to have some serious words with Scott if this continues. I have a feeling Scott's not going to last very long. But anyway, I think it's time to update the vigil. I'm just going to go ahead and put the lanterns and candles in the right order, and I will tell you guys the totals so far after we come back. Sir? Sir? Uh, hello? <laughs> Sir? I do not have an elytra. <laughs> please come down from my house. Sir, please. How, how did you even... <laughs> how did you even get up here? <laughs> this, is, this is the most ludicrous place for you and your llamas to be. What do you even have? 
Uh, you're not even hiding anything good up here. You're s Once again, you're selling sand to me in a desert. I do not understand your methods. Let me at least uh, help you get down safely. <laughs> And take your llamas with you, that's right. <laughs> Get down there. Go on, you as well. Honestly, you can't take these guys anywhere, <laughs> which is why I don't try. Although, I'll take the leads, thank you very much uh, for that. <laughs> Good trade. I get you down from my building safely, you give me a lead, and you can walk away. Fair deal? Fair deal. Anyway, by the time that guy showed up, I had done most of the work here on the vigil. And I do want to get more glow item frames, it's just difficult right now, because I used all my glow ink on the signs for the town of Mangrovia over there, so that empire had all of my glow ink just kind of, you know, used up in it, and I don't really have a great deal of leather for the item frames either, so I would go out looking for cows, except it's kind of difficult to cover a large enough distance to find cows, and this entire area around is a desert, so the vigil is looking a little bit bare bones, a little bit stripped down from what it was, but we've at least managed to get the right amount of lanterns up for most of my fellow empires. We still don't have precise numbers for either Joey or Shovel, but hopefully I'll be able to get those another time. In the meantime, while I am a lowly groundling without the elytra, I have been doing a little bit more of the work I can do from the ground, like figuring out pathways and stuff around this place. So I started moving this pathway out here towards the Cod Sanctuary, which is still looking good. And in case you didn't catch this earlier, Jimmy has left me a sign over here to say he loves it. The Cod have a home. Very excited by that. And to be honest, yeah, I'm happy to keep this here, even if Jimmy isn't the Emperor anymore, because I just like the Cod. They're kind of adorable down here in their little tank. And even though the explosion caused fissures to erupt in the desert of Pixandria, some of which were kind of here before, but there's a lot of sand that generates on these layers without anything supporting it and it just falls, I'm actually going to turn that into a little bit of pathway stuff, kind of, you know, making lemons out of lemonade once again. We are going to be having some paths that come down here, maybe to the waterfront a little bit as well, and then around the outside we can have this branch off following the natural area of the desert, and then hopefully that will mean that fewer things end up, like, falling down even more around here after I clear this area up a bit. And welcome back, folks. Things have changed a little around here, and we finally have a few more of these paths in. Once again, I would love to show you a view from the air, but we'll have to wait until afterwards and use the replay mod for that. <laughs> I love the way these pathways turned out, though. I'm actually using some of the ditches in the terrain that were caused, yes, by that last little bit of tectonic activity, and we're starting to find a walled-off sections around here that I think would be kind of perfect for additional structures, maybe a couple of other bits and pieces around here, kind of like the residential area over there on the other side of the river. But I'm so happy still with the color palette we picked out for the pathways. I think this has been one of my favorite path designs I've ever come up with for the, the kind of warmth of the area, making sure that the area stays a little bit kind of deserty feeling whilst taking out a lot of the sand and stuff because we're building with sandstone. And so the contrast needs to be something. But here, in the center of town, we now have a donkey, and I don't know whose donkey this is. I found it just on the shoreline as I was gathering a little bit more sandstone to build with, and this donkey had maybe like half a dozen buckets in the inventory, and no name, just a saddle, and it's a tame donkey, so I brought it all the way back to Pixandria, and it is now just kind of wandering around the central part of town here where the vigil is. So if you know whose donkey this is, and I can return it somehow, do let me know in the comments. But I did promise you an update on the deaths, and I didn't actually give you guys the final tallies that I have here. And now a lot of this is based on the death tallies that I got from everybody after the feast, and I know that some things have changed a little bit since. So once again, I would love your help in determining how many times some of the other folks on the server have died. But starting with Fwip, he has 47 deaths. Gemini Tay has 26. Mythical Sausage has 72. Pearl back there has 26 as well. Lizzie the Ocean Queen only has 23, so only needs one lantern right now. Catherine Elizabeth has leapt forward from the last time and has 48 deaths now, so there are three lanterns there and 12 candles lit on top of that. Scott Smajer, I think, still has died the least out of everybody on the server with 14, but we'll see what happens if somebody decides to come after him after this whole Elytra debacle. Jimmy, Solidarity Gaming, 37 deaths. Joel, 
101. And I'm fairly certain he has died since. Oh, yes, and there's me as well. I have 26 right now. So, a couple of candles there. Two lanterns in the sky. And still... Not much in the way of item frames popping up for me, unfortunately. I think I do need to go and salvage some supplies from further afield. Maybe go out into the plains biome and see if any cows have spawned. But it is getting more and more difficult to acquire leather. And I'd love to go and trade with my fellow empires. But I can't get over there because I can't fly. <laughs> and honestly, walking around anywhere on this server at this point has proven a little difficult. I would love to start making roads to the nearest empire as well, but the nearest empire is Jimmy, and he's about 800 blocks that way, and any kind of road like that is going to take a long time to build. In the meantime though, I am very happy with the roads we have built around here. There are still a few that end up leading to nowhere, and some that I will probably link up to stuff like the storage building. I'll probably wrap this around the side of the building so it can link up over there, but what I am most proud of now is the fact that these roads lead to the ant hill. Or Maybe from the Ant Hill, I guess, because this is supposed to have been kind of the cradle of Pixandrian civilization in the beginning. And so around the back of my main house here, there's a little pathway that leads around. It also leads back around by the cactus garden that we built earlier on. And I thought this was going to be like residential territory around here, but what it actually has is the entrance to the Ant Hill, or one of them, at least. And I've made good on my promise that I made earlier, although I don't know if I can really find a good place to jump up here from, so I'll put down a water bucket here and hop up onto the top of this. I have a little water pool up here that could serve as a riptide point if we end up needing to get up the rest of the ant hill. And I've surrounded it in dripstone, which may not have been the best idea considering I might end up falling on some of that at some point and taking additional fall damage. But I wanted there to be pools around here and it's led to a little bit of interesting terraforming that I wanted to show you because down around here, we have now a little bit of moss, some mossy cobblestone, a bit of tuff, and I've started employing some glow lichen to blend that into the rest of the anthill, which looks a little bit weird when you zoom into it up close, but if you look at it from further back, I think it genuinely looks kind of cool, like there is a little bit of other rock seeping into the anthill, or maybe even that the sand of the anthill has been brushed aside to reveal some other kind of rock underneath. And I'm thinking about the Ant Hill as it figures into the history of Pixandria, and I'm thinking this probably started out when people came out here to the desert, not just as a shelter, but maybe as a kind of colossal mine. And maybe this is where Pixandria mined its first copper, and where the copper was pulled out of the earth for the first time that would later become Pixandria's greatest export. And for that, I kind of want to show a little bit of the copper mining history of Pixandria and have the walls and halls in here decorated with copper or maybe some raw copper and stuff like that to really show off how rich we ended up being. Which ironically, in game terms, means I probably need to go out and mine the copper from elsewhere because there isn't a huge amount of it left around here or if there is, I would need to properly branch mine for it at the right level to find the most copper, which might be a little bit of a tall order and might even shift the sands around here more than I would like. But I love the way this gateway came together. I had a bit of feedback from people on stream about this and we ended up going with the cyan concrete powder around here to kind of imply that copper look while looking a little bit more royal. And there's something about adding a glow lichen to it was a suggestion I got from chat that makes the concrete powder almost look metallic. It has this kind of shimmery effect to it where there is a darker section on one side then on this side it looks a little bit lighter, even though that is just a basic block of concrete powder. I think it gives it this almost satiny kind of look, as though these are curtains or something. I don't know, but it feels really cool to me. And so I'm going to see if I can use that as an accent colour elsewhere in my empire, and maybe even on some of the other entrances around the ant hill for some better effect. And honestly, just standing back and taking a look at that, I really like that as a gateway. Tried to make it stand out a little bit by putting other materials around it so it didn't blend in with the sandstone of the ant hill too much and I think we've done that pretty well. And of course the last of our pathways kind of wraps around the side of this building here, finally connects up this area next to the bridge across the river and we can go across the river to the other side of town. And I do want to do a little bit more work on this. A lot of the stuff I've been doing lately has just been a bunch of building and frankly I don't know how interesting it is to put all of that building on camera and half the time it's stuff I need to focus for so I'm not all that good with the commentary side of things. So I'm sorry if the, these episodes have felt 
a little short lately and to be honest I wanted to let you guys know something about the direction of this series for me because we now have pre-releases out for Minecraft 1.18 and that means that the 1.18 update itself is just around the corner. Now I'm really happy that I've been part of Empires for this long and I'm sure that the series is going to continue for everybody in some form or another but the focus of my channel in particular is probably going to switch back to the Minecraft Survival Guide, which is the series that really put me on the map. It's a series that I know a lot of people love, and I'm really excited to start a season two. So if the Empire's episodes start becoming a little bit fewer and further between, that is why. I'm just putting all of my effort and all of my focus into kicking off 1.18 with style in the Minecraft Survival Guide. And that doesn't mean Empires is going to be over, certainly not for the other members of the server who I think are planning to continue things in 1.17 at least for a little while. And I'll try and hop on for group events when I can, but just to let you know ahead of time, just to set some expectations here, I'm going to be building a bunch of stuff on Empires, but you may not see videos all that much. I'm so excited about some of the projects we have going on on Empires, though, that I definitely can't let this world go just yet. So do not worry. <laughs> There'll be more from Empires SMP, hopefully very soon. But for now, I think that's where we're going to call it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Empires SMP. My name has been Pixorifs. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.